Hey guys. So there's something that popped up recently among the flight sim world. Uh, a controller, believe it or not. <laughs> um, but whether it's out of shock or awe, the Yaman Arrow by Yaman Flight is definitely turning heads. I mean, look at this thing. Clearly it's a gamepad. I mean, it has a left stick, has a D-pad with an extra button in the center, which is pretty neat. A bunch of face buttons. And instead of a right stick, it has a trim hat. So that's neat. But it also has something that is severely lacking from a standard console controller. And that is a slider. In fact, it has two sliders. So imagine being able to control the throttle using these. But on top of that, not only does it have two sliders, it has two more sliders. But interestingly, these are modeled after a Cessna 172's push-pull controls for a throttle and mix. And on top of that, if it wasn't clear this was a gamepad for flight sims, it also has a Cessna 172's trim wheel built into the left grip. This is nuts. This is literally a gamepad that is designed for flight sims. And there's another feature that I wanted to show you. Um, if you scroll down, here we can see the triggers but they are mechanically linked to simulate pushing on rudder pedals. So if you were to pull on this trigger, it pushes this trigger out, which is really freaking cool. That's pretty neat. Now, why is this good for flight sims? Well, based on their statement, I can figure out at least three major groups of people who can benefit from this kind of device. First up, this is a device that is designed by simmers or simmers, meaning people who already play flight sims. Now, why would this be beneficial for people who already have a OTAS, a yoke, a throttle, rudder pedals? Why would they want this? Well, you're not necessarily home to use all that stuff all the time. Who knows, maybe you're a businessman, you're on a trip, and still want to be able to play your favorite flight sim. Well, you could just plug in your gaming laptop, put it up on the tray that's in front of you, plug in this controller, and bam! You have access to all the controls you ever need to fly your favorite plane in your flight sim. In addition to existing flight simmers, uh, this could also be marketed towards developers of flight sims who just worked on a very small feature or even large feature, whatever, and you wanted to give it a quick test. But in order to test it, you have to like lug over your flight stick, your throttle, plug it in, mount it to your debt. It it's, can be a very cumbersome process just to test a single build of many. Instead of doing all of that, you can just plug in the single controller that gives you all the functionality you'll ever need and then just use that to test. And finally, the last group of people, and arguably the most important group of people, are those who want to fly without requiring major hardware investments. And this means people who are new to flight sims, those who want to try it out without having to spend too much money to get the full flight sim experience. In the end, flight sims are hard enough as is and nothing turns away new players like a barrier to entry that involves their wallet, especially for games that fall under the free-to-play category. Now, considering cheap controllers already exist, what does the Yaman Arrow bring to the table that other standard gamepads can't? Well, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison with a tried-and-true Xbox Core controller against the Yaman Arrow. Before we get started, it's worth mentioning that I don't have a physical arrow to compare against the Xbox Core controller as far as comfortability or ergonomics, so I won't be talking about that. But I will be talking about is that the Yaman's website lists that the arrow has 7 axes and 21 buttons. Compared to the Xbox Core controller which has 15 buttons, technically 16 if you count the Xbox button, and 5 axes in the thumbsticks and triggers. So, how does this compare physically between the two controllers? Well, on the arrow, there are a total of six face buttons. Compare that to the four face buttons on the Xbox Core controller. However, if you look at these two buttons on the arrow, they can be compared to these two buttons on the Xbox Core controller. Technically, there isn't much of a difference besides the layout. Also, there is a 5-way D-pad compared to the 4-way D-pad on the Xbox Core controller. However, similar to before, the center button can technically be attributed to the share button on the Xbox Core controller. It's worth mentioning that these three buttons, the Start, Select, and Share buttons, are sometimes unconfigurable depending on the game. As for other similarities, you can also click in the left stick on the Xbox Core controller just like you can on the arrow. 
You can also click in the shoulder buttons just like you can on the arrow. You can also click in the right thumbstick just like you can on the trim hat on the arrow. But that is where the button similarities now end if you exclude the Xbox button. Now, on the arrow there are an additional 6 buttons. There's also 1, 2, 3, 4, just like a D-pad. This has 4 directions in addition to the D-press mentioned before. And on top of that, the trim wheel is technically 2 buttons, one for rolling it upward and one for rolling it downward. Just like a mouse, either direction will continuously press over and over as long as you're rolling in that direction. And now, with regards to axes, on the arrow there are 7 axes compared to the 5 on the Xbox Core Controller. So where are these similar? First, they're similar in the left stick. So you have 1, 2, and similarly in the arrow you have 1 and 2. And also, you have a single shared axis in the triggers, just like in the arrow. And in the right stick, there is one, two. But this isn't an analog stick on the arrow. Instead, you can see these two axes on these two sliders. And then that's where the similarities end. You have two additional axes in these push-pull sliders down here. That's where the extra two axes are found in the arrow. And that is the comparison between the arrow and the Xbox Core Controller. Unfortunately, that's about as deep as I can get with my look into the Yawman Arrow. I'll have to get hands-on time with it before I can start criticizing anything related to comfort, ergonomics, and even functionality. Because, obviously, I have some bias towards standard console controllers since that's all I've ever used for flight sims. But not only that, I primarily play DCS World, a combat flight sim where the requirements for controls, I feel, are a lot more demanding. Now, that said, there are some aspects of the Yaman Arrow's core design that I have issue with, namely the loss of the right thumbstick, but perhaps it's just because this was not designed for my use case in DCS World, but instead, and more likely, it is designed with general aviation in mind for games like Microsoft Flight Sim. The Yaman Arrow is poised to take the traditional gamepad design off of autopilot and bring in a brand new attitude to all of sim gaming.